So the iPad mini has been in my hands for almost a week now, and I've tried using this as my daily go-to for most of my typical everyday tasks, while throwing in some slight gaming and catching up on my favorite shows. The Mini I feel like stole the show at the Apple event with its all new powerful redesign, much larger screen, and now finally sporting a USB Type-C charging port. Now over the years, I've always looked at the iPad Mini as a much smaller iPad, but a much larger iPhone. Its smaller form factor made it the perfect companion for doctors, pilots, and even those that love to day trade on the go. Its new redesign makes it look and feel super similar to my much larger iPad Pro, which you guys know has been my go-to since it first launched a few years back. It comes with four new colors to complement its aluminum frame with flat sides, nice squared off edges, and a screen that pretty much fills out the device at 8.3 inches. Now the bezels could have been slightly smaller in my opinion, but in all reality it would have just added to its base price point. You get two storage options with the Mini. For $499 you get the 64GB model, and for an extra $150 you get the 256GB model. That is for the Wi-Fi option only. If you take that cellular route, it's obviously going to cost more money. One of the most notable issues that users, including myself, experience at times with the Mini is the jelly effect you get when scrolling in portrait mode. The easiest way to explain this is it feels like one side is moving just a tad bit faster than the other. Now initially I thought this was just something I was experiencing bumping down to a 60Hz refresh rate from 120 after being used to using the iPad Pro daily. However, a spokesperson for Apple came out and stated that this is perfectly normal since typically LCD screens refresh line by line, so it's normal for the lines at the top to refresh at a different rate from the lines at the bottom. Now typically this didn't really affect me since most of the time I'm using my iPad horizontally and this seems to only happen when you're using it vertically, which even then it doesn't really ruin the experience, it is just something worth mentioning. If I did have one gripe with the screen on the iPad mini, it's not the jelly effect, but more so the brightness. Using the iPad mini during the day, especially in direct sunlight, I feel like it could be a bit brighter. So that would be one complaint that I have with the screen. Aside from that, it's absolutely fabulous and I would like to have that 120Hz refresh rate as well coming from the iPad Pro. Heading over to specs, Apple updated the processor now giving us the new A15 Bionic, which probably means we won't need to see a spec bump for a few years thanks to this upgrade. The 8.3 inch display is a longer display than what you got with the Mini from 2019, which makes some apps that haven't been updated display black bars. Now it was mostly arcade games in my testing, whereas the core apps that come with the Mini such as Safari or Notes didn't seem to have any of those issues. Some of the apps will auto adjust, whereas others will need work from developers. You now also have support for the second gen Apple Pencil that clips magnetically to the side of the Mini, which is almost the same length of the iPad itself. Apple even had to move the volume buttons to another spot just to make it work. Now the battery life on the iPad Mini is decent, I wouldn't say it's anything spectacular or crazy. You get about a full day of use, sometimes up to two days depending on what you're actually doing and your extensive heavy workloads. Now for me, I was charging it every other day, whereas with my iPad Pro, I charge it once or twice a week, kind of like the M1 MacBook Pro or the M1 MacBook Air. Now, if you're someone that's out in the field, doctors, pilots, lawyers, something like that, someone likes day trading on the go, you shouldn't have too many issues getting through a full day of use with the iPad mini. The rest of its design fires off in a similar fashion, sporting new improved cameras and now support for center stage through the new 12 megapixel ultra wide front facing camera, which tracks and keeps you centered during those video calls. The camera on the back is good, or should I say good enough for typical 4K recording and snagging photos for documents or any other work related tasks. No face ID with the mini, but you do get that touch ID sensor on the power button just like you got with the iPad Air. USB Type-C finally comes to the mini now, which if I'm not mistaken is the final iPad in the lineup that was missing that type of charging port. No headphone jack or support for multiple users either, which may keep some people from purchasing this device solely for a child or younger loved one. We all know sharing an iPad in a household just never seems to work out, so this is a feature that's worth mentioning, especially when it comes as a standard feature with the competition on most other tablets out there. Now I know it sounds like I'm nagging and complaining, but in all honesty, this is one of my favorite refreshes I've seen from Apple in a very long time. It's filled this void for me that I didn't even know was missing. If it was a friend, family member, or even one of you guys that asked me, should I pick one up? I wouldn't hesitate in saying yes, but I'd follow it up with this question. What do you guys plan on using it for? What is it that you really want out of an iPad? If you're an engineer on the field, a doctor, or someone who's always on the go and needs something compact to cover all your bases, then yes, absolutely pick one up. It's no secret Apple's using Pilots as one of their main marketing tools around the Mini. It just makes sense. It's super useful and gets the job done. But if you're a parent or someone who genuinely enjoys the tablet experience for multitasking, watching videos, or having your kids use it for class and to do homework, then you'd probably be better off with the base $329 iPad or the iPad Air that comes in at almost the same price. I enjoy the Mini because it changes the way I engage with content while still doing everything my larger iPad can do in a smaller form factor. Even though most of the time I do end up using it as a larger iPhone anyway instead of using it to get work done. I guess I expected just a little bit more. Definitely 120 hertz for a refresh rate and possibly the same cameras you got with the iPad Pro and slightly thinner bezels. But then at that point the price most likely would be up there with the iPad Pro which kind of defeats the purpose. 
Now, I am curious, which model is your favorite and which one are you guys currently rocking with in 2021? Let me know down below where you'll also find the links to everything that we covered in today's video. If you want to see more, go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Fury. And if you enjoyed this content, please make sure you smash that like button for me, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. It really helps me out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.